So I am officially on week four of High Tech Pharmaceuticals new pro hormone, Andriol, which is 153 milligrams of 4-andro. And this is a different kind of 4-andro when we compare it to an androdiol or a Sustanon 250 because this has an endecanate ester attached to it, which is the longest ester we know of. Therefore, it takes the longest to clear. Now, for me personally, I experienced some gains. Yeah, polishing gains, but I really liked how stable it was in terms of feel. But comments like this, well, they're interesting. This is actually essentially an oral form of just like a TRT, like testosterone. The idea here is just to build it up in your system, creating that even keel baseline over time. The whole point of this video series, this two-part video series, it's very simple. We're going to look at week one and week four, natural compared to TRT back in 2016. We're going to compare that to week one versus week four on Androdeo. Now, I realize that week four is not really going to tell us as much as we need to know, but it will tell us some kind of trend. It's going to paint the picture at least up until we get to week eight when we're going to be showing bloods, before and afters, and the works. But for now, let's go ahead and dive on into the benefits. So ultimately, I just decided to do the standard serving size on the back of the bottle, which is just one tablet a day. That's for the first four weeks. And then the second four, if you're just following along and you, or I know 120 of you are taking this with me, if you want to take two, the second four weeks, that's what I'll be doing. benefits for the first four weeks the first being probably the most ridiculous aspect of it was the libido side now i'm already kind of all over my wife as it is anyway she's turned me into an absolute animal i think i'm giving you more information than you probably need but she did notice that there was an increase there in fact she even called it out i noticed that as well strength definitely went up week three i noticed that the waist just felt a little lighter just overall and my recovery went up too i know this to be true because I'm the type of guy who works out three to four times a week. And I know that's not a lot for some of you, but guess what guys, that works for me. I don't need to be judged by somebody out there because I go intense and I'm only in and out 45 minutes to an hour. I go hard, so hard that my body requires some extra recovery because see this, see how skinny my wrists are. My body cannot handle a lot of stress. It's just, it just can't. I have to get all the recovery I can. So I noticed that Androdial allowed me to recover a little more quickly so I can get back into the gym. In fact, I work out three days in a row, which I haven't done in years. And just to highlight the day I'm having, I think I've said Androdial like a couple times now, and we're not even talking about Androdial. We're talking about Andriol. So sorry about that. Now, keep in mind that everything I'm telling you right now, guys, these benefits, you got to take with a grain of salt because it's contextual. Circumstances matter. What your lifestyle looks like, what you're going through right now matters. So with that in mind, let's talk about that for a second. So you may have noticed over the last couple of videos that uh, I appear to be shrinking because I am. Just check out my face before. Obviously, this is what it looks like now. And this isn't exactly from Andreal because we got to look at the circumstances. Before I started the cycle, actually just after week one, I went from basically on the couch not really. I was just working from home, but I was only burning like 3000 calories a day to then 10,000 right after week one. So we got to take that into account. But what I did recognize is that I could eat all the food in the world. Seriously, I can eat whatever I want and I'm not gaining anything, not necessarily muscle, but I'm also not gaining fat either. So I'm attributing this to Andrea because I can tell that my metabolism is definitely revved up. So I guess you could say I'm unintentionally cutting here, but guys, I don't have time. I'm just going to be honest with you. I would much rather work on these videos. We've got to see where we are in life and say, hey, is this what we want to focus on right now? Because there is a time and place. I love fitness, but you know what I love even more? Sharing this stuff with you guys. And if that means that I'm a little bit smaller than I could be, well, then so be it. The side effects, even though there were some, really weren't too bad. At night, I had a little bit more energy, so it was a little harder for me to fall asleep. You might argue that that's not even a side effect, and that's a benefit because you have more energy. But a big one that I also noticed on Sustenon 250 is that within the first week, right crept into week two, when I went to go pee, I had to almost kegel a little harder to get that flow started. It goes away by week three, and this same thing happened to me on Sustenon 250, but it's just something you might want to watch out for. And day six... I noticed a little bit of anxiety creeping in, not near as much as a Sustanon 250, but I also noticed that my red, my red, <laughs> my chest was a little more red. And what this has indicated in the past is that high blood pressure. 
And where does this high blood pressure probably come from? High estrogen. So I just added in a remistain and that cleared it right up. Now, if you're one of the 120 members here that are taking this with us, I want to hear from you. And so do others. Everybody's wanting to know about this product because, well, we're the first ones to try it. So if you could help some people out and toss in your experience below how your first four weeks have gone, I'd love to hear from you. So to make the comparison, we're going to hop back to 2016 when I started TRT. We're going to compare week four to week one. And keep in mind that LH and FSH, remember, these are fertility markers, sperm markers, how much sperm is being produced, and the brain to ball connection, meaning your brain, your pituitary gland through the luteinizing hormone is telling your balls to produce natural testosterone. So let's take a look at it. So when I started TRT on week one, my estrogen or estradiol 2 as a blood marker went from 24 PG per ml to 41 PG per ml, which this is expected. I don't think I was taking any AI and that's why it jumped so quickly, but I needed to learn this stuff, right? This is more than a four andro. This is straight testosterone. So it's going to aromatize heavily into estrogen. Now, when we look at total testosterone, it went from 11 nanograms per deciliter. If you're new here, I got hit really hard, got a concussion, very bad one playing flag football, and I wish I had a better story than that, but my testosterone shut off entirely. I literally started at 11 nanograms per deciliter. When we compare that to week four on Sustanon 250, the real testosterone, it went to 728 nanograms per deciliter. Let me tell you guys, the difference between those two numbers is crazy. My life completely changed forever after that. LH, or luteinizing hormone, went from one to 0.7 and our FSH went from one to 0.6, which guys, this is expected because when we're taking testosterone, it's the most exogenous, why did I say it like that? It's the most exogenous form, even when compared to a pro hormone, right? This is testosterone. This is going to aromatize an estrogen the most. This is going to shut off our brain to ball connection the most. This is the real stuff. So we should see that go to almost zero over time. Now it's compared to the blood work running one pill a day of Andriol week one compared to week four. Week one, my estrogen again, estradiol 2 as a blood marker, went from 38 PG per ml to 45 PG per ml. So we also saw estrogen go up, not near as much as our Sustanon 250, the real testosterone, but it went up enough to say, hey, we might want to think about throwing in a remistain here. My total testosterone went from 821 nanograms per deciliter. Again, I was on TRT. I'm on TRT. I've been on TRT and I will continue to be on TRT. So it's a control here. So it went from 821 to 912 nanograms per deciliter, which is noticeable. And LH and FSH, this is where things get weird. Week 1, 0.6 and 0.7 respectively to 0.8 and 0.9 respectively, which is kind of crazy. Prohormones are supposed to shut you down a little bit because it's an exogenous source, which kind of implies this might be a test booster. And though these figures aren't technically statistically significant because it's just into week four and we've got to wait until it fully saturates, which is about week four, but we can't make a conclusive decision or define anything until really week eight. But what we can say is that the trend here is very unusual. The fact that FSH and LH goes up. We've got to remember that this is a four andro. This is a pro hormone, which comes into the body and acts like an exogenous source. It looks like an endogenous, but it acts like an exogenous. Therefore, the pituitary gland, the luteinizing hormone in your balls, that signal should be weakened. But what we see here is very different. It actually increases. And even if it's not much, it still shouldn't be an increase, at least not with a pro hormone. Testosterone goes up slightly. Guys, this is acting a lot like a test booster. But for me specifically, I've noticed that my glycogen stores are a lot more than they would be on any test booster. My vascularity is a lot higher. And I can assure you one thing, my sex drive is much higher. But again, we got to make it till week eight. And if you want to know what that looks like and follow along this journey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, tap that bell notification. We do weekly videos and we will do so for the next four weeks up until Andreal week eight. Until then, my brothers, stay safe and stay swole.